This lesson will be the first of several lessons based on momentum. By the end of this lesson, hopefully you'll be able to explain what is momentum and what are the factors that influence momentum, as well as being able to do some minor calculations involving momentum. So let's start, before we go on, I have a little scenario for you here. Let's pretend it is the morning of your physics diploma and you're running late. And once you get to school, you lock your vehicle, but you realize you locked your keys and calculator in your vehicle. You don't have time to call for help, but you see two rocks. You see this little rock here and a big boulder here. You think to yourself, I could use these one of these rocks to possibly break through the window and get my calculator and make it in time for my exam. My question to you is this, is which one do you use? Do you use the small rock, rock one, or do you use the big rock, rock two, to break through the window and get your calculator? Which one do you use and why? The answer to this question deals with momentum. And we'll get back to this question after we learn exactly what is momentum. What is momentum? Momentum is a vector quantity. Why? Because momentum is dealing with any mass that has a velocity. And as soon as we're using velocity, we know it's going to have to be a vector. So it's any mass that is moving. So any mass that is moving or has a velocity, we have momentum. And it is the product of mass times velocity. So in other words, we have momentum, P is the symbol for momentum, is equal to mass times velocity. The units for momentum, therefore, are going to be kilograms, meters per second. So now if we remember Newton's first law, okay, an object in motion wants to stay in motion. Now let's bring this into momentum. An object want, with momentum wants to stay in motion. So we're going to need a lot of force for something that is moving either that is very heavy or very fast to stop this momentum or motion. Now looking at that, let's think back to our locked calculator in the car. So we could look at that two ways. We have two rocks. Okay. Some of you might look at this and go, rock two. Why? It has a big mass. And remember, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So we have a big mass here. This is a big mass. So no matter what, that window is going to need a lot of force to stop it. So the momentum of this big rock, even with a small velocity, should be able to break through the window. But then some of you might be thinking, rock one. Because remember, once again, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. We look at rock one, I know I could have a big velocity. Even though it's a small mass, I could throw this rock hard enough with enough velocity to break the window. So there's two ways of doing this. So something you might want to think about for your answers to this is, can you alter the ratios of your velocities between rock one and rock two as much as the ratios of mass are? So for instance, if rock one is only 20 grams and rock two is maybe 25 kilograms, can you make the factor of velocity that much? Can you increase the velocity of this enough to make up for the small size? So I want you to think about that and how that plays into momentum. So let's continue on here on what momentum does. So right here we have two pictures of bowling. So in these two pictures we're saying this is identical bowling ball, the exact same bowling ball. So the mass of the bowling ball is the same. Now according to this, on the left, this photo here, the bowling ball has less momentum than the bowling ball on the right. What evidence suggests that the bowling ball on the left has less momentum on the right? If you guess the velocity, you are correct. The bowling ball on the left has way less velocity than the bowling ball on the right. So now I have some things here for you guys to think about. So basically let's overview what we've learned is momentum. Momentum is mass and motion. So the motion of a mass is momentum. The direction of a momentum is a vector. Okay, It's the same as the direction of the velocity. So momentum is related, its vector is related to the velocity. So how would a momentum change if A, the mass is doubled and the velocity stays the same? 
So to do these, I'll give you a hint, and we're going to just write this formula here. So we know momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So if I double the velocity and the mass stays the same, what will happen to momentum? Now let's take a look at B. If the velocity is reduced by a factor of one-third, what will happen to my momentum? My last one is going to be a change in direction from east to west. So let's say you're going east, now you're going west. What happens to my momentum? That's for you guys to think about. So let's take a look at our first example involving calculations. It is, what is the momentum of a 10 kilogram object traveling at 15 meters per second east? So we know my formula for momentum, which is what we're trying to figure out. We know my mass, and we know my velocity. I want you right now to pause the video, see if you could solve this question. Welcome back. So you should have got for this here, a, quite a solution is something like this. So we know my formula is momentum is equal to mass times velocity. We have 10 times 15, which is our mass, 10 kilograms, times 15 meters per second, which ends up giving us 150 kilograms meters per second east. Remember to keep the direction due to velocity. So one thing that's always important to remember is that an object with momentum is very hard to stop. So let's go back to that window. The higher the momentum, the more force is needed to stop it. So if we could break the force threshold of the window with the momentum of the rock, we are able to break in and get our calculator. Now let's take a look at number two here. So here's my next example. The combined mass of a bobsled and two riders is 380 kilograms. The sled rider system consists of a momentum of 4.68 times 10 to the 3 kilograms meters per second west. Calculate the velocity of the sled. So let's start off here. We want to find my velocity. We know my momentum is equal to 4.68 times 10 to the 3 kilograms meters per second. And we know my mass is equal to 380 kilograms. Okay? Now, I want to find my velocity. So we know momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So in other words, velocity is equal to momentum divided by mass. In this case here, we have 4.68 times 10 to the 3 kilograms meters per second and we're going to divide that by my mass of 380 kilograms. And this is west, I should always keep my direction there. So my kilograms cancel off, and I'm going to be left with 12.3. And we're going to have meters per second, and we have to keep our direction west. So let's take a look at our last and final example for this lesson. During liftoff, a model rocket's momentum increases by a factor of four, while its mass decreases by a factor of a half. The velocity of the rocket initially was 8.5 meters per second up. What is the final velocity during that time interval? So once again, we're looking at momentum again. So we know momentum, and there's mass, and we have velocity. So velocity is the key thing we're looking for. So we want to rearrange my momentum formula for velocity. Now that we know that, we're going to make it proportional. So we're going to look at the proportionality of this. So we replace P, the momentum was increased by a factor of 4. So P gets replaced by 4P. And we know my mass gets replaced by half. Now if we simplify that, we know that p over m is equal to velocity, so my velocity is going to be proportional. It's going to be 8 times my original velocity. So in other words, we are going to have 8.5 multiplied meters per second up multiplied by 8. 
which will end up giving me a total of 68 meters per second 